All right, preparing live stream. Um, okay, I think we're ready. I also, I'll take down my camera. I'm sure people are gonna be able to see it soon, but um, I'll take down my camera so that people just see you, but I'll be here asking questions and stuff. So, uh, hello everybody. If, you can, if you're can, if you joining us or you're gonna pop in, um, I'm Nora Henley. I'm with the Spina Bifida Association. Um, and I'm really excited tonight for this Ask the Expert with two incredible athletes, Ashley Dice and uh, Daniel Romanchuk. As always, you can ask questions to both of them in the comments below, and we will relay questions as they come in. Um, uh, you guys, we're just going to get started. Ashley, why don't you go first in introducing yourself? Sure. Um, like she said, my name is Ashley Dice. I am a uh, Team USA para power lifter. I've been with the team about four and a half, five years. Um, outside of the sport, I'm a graphic designer, um, also a business owner. Um, uh, my goals right now is preparing for the next Paralympic Games, which is in 2024. And that's a little bit about me. Ashley, this is a good moment to actually explain to people as much is it seems silly that people might not know, but what is powerlifting? Um, so powerlifting, well, I would say para powerlifting is just an adaptation of powerlifting for disabled athletes. Um, for us, our basic focus is the bench press. Um, a simple way to understand that is when you lay down and you have the bar across you and you just push it up and it's whoever lifts the heaviest weight basically. Oh, sorry, my phone. Okay, Daniel, sorry. <laughs> it's your turn. You can go now. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm Daniel Romanchuk. Uh, I am uh, 22 years old. Uh, and I uh, basically, uh, I've been involved in sports since I was uh, about two years old. And uh, so I, I currently uh, do wheelchair racing, uh, but I've done many different, uh, uh, you know, other sports as well. Um, and uh, I live out in uh, Champaign, Illinois, which is about two hours south of Chicago. Okay. And Daniel, are there any specifics about the specific races that you do would be beneficial for people to know? Like, is there a specific distance that you always do? Uh, so I pretty much uh, do anything from the 100 through the marathon. Uh, and so pretty much any distance. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Um, Okay, let's get to it. I think let, let's let's start at the beginning. How, you, both of you can answer this. How old were you guys when you first started sports and adaptive sports? And also maybe how did how did you get involved in it? What what happened for you guys to start that that part of your life up? We can start with that. Ashley, we can start with you. Yes. Okay. Um, so I did um, adaptive sports as a kid. I was able to go to like camps and stuff and learn different sports, tennis, basketball. Um, during my middle high school years, I kind of went away from sports and just kind of focused on life basically. And then I didn't hear about Paralympics or get back into sports until about 2012. So that kind of started my <laughs> athletic or adaptive sport journey again. Did you do any specific sports when you were younger? Like, did you play basketball or ten like wheelchair tennis, anything like that? I mostly did wheelchair tennis as like what I actually had like a coach and was training and all that. But I didn't know about the Paralympics. I didn't know that I could go farther than just like a camp or a like friendly competition locally. Okay. Okay. How about you, Daniel? Yeah, so uh, I started with uh, uh, the local sports program out of, uh, I'm originally I'm from Baltimore, uh, outside of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, and so I started with a program uh, in Baltimore when I was uh, two years old. Uh, and so I was swimming when I was three. Um, I started wheelchair racing when I was four. Uh, I pretty much did everything else they offered uh, from basketball, a uh, wheelchair basketball, sled hockey, archery, um, it, anything else they offered. Uh, and so I started uh, concentrating on uh, track, wheelchair basketball, sled hockey, archery. Uh, 
are we good? I I started hearing myself for some reason. I'm not, not sure what's. I think I think I fixed it. Okay, good. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, oh, good. God, gotta, love, gotta, gotta love technology. It has a mind of its own sometimes. <laughs> um, and so um, I basically started uh, concentrating on track and field or on, on track um, around uh, 2015. And um, pretty much uh, I've been to uh, Rio uh, to the Rio games and I'll be heading to Tokyo in a little bit. Yeah, you answered, you already answered one of the questions from someone asked where the next uh, Olympics are and they're just a few weeks away. They're really just, a, they're literally practically here. Um, uh, Daniel, did you say when you were two, you started in wheelchair racing? Was that the first thing that you did? Uh, I started racing when I was four. Oh, uh, wow. so I started with the, the a local adaptive sports program, the Bennett Blazers. Okay. Uh, so they're based out of Baltimore, Maryland, and I started with them when I was two. Yeah, you you guys might not have the answer to this question, but somebody did ask before this: What is just a good way to find adaptive sports, like in your community? Where's a good place to look? So you might not have known that when you were a two year old, but do you have any ideas or recommendations now? Uh, yeah, I, I'd say um, uh, Move United is uh, a great resource. Uh, I think they have a, a number of different. Uh, uh, Kind of programs on a big map uh and so uh you know that that's a great resource to try and find the a local program um uh, i actually got involved uh, just through through word of mouth uh, i was at a, a spina bifida association meeting when i was uh around one and a half or so years old and uh my mom got told about about bennett that's really cool Ashley, do you have any insight to where people can start looking if it's something they want to try or have their child try? Um, yeah, like he was saying, um, you Move United is a great resource. Also here, I know in California, the Challenge Athlete Foundation is also a great resource to you know get your child involved in sports and just learning about new sports. Um, also something that they used to do here in the um, San Bernardino area was called the Disability Sports Festival. So that's what kind of opened my eyes up to the Paralympics, just meeting athletes and trying out um, different sports. Great, okay. This is a good question from someone, one of our viewers, Michael asked, he's 35 and he wants to know if he's too old to join adaptive sports. Um, I think I know the answer to that, but Ashley, do you want to answer that one? <laughs> I'll definitely answer that because I'm 34 right now. So my answer is no, I started Paralympic or adaptive sports at 25. So I would say it's never too late. Um, people I used to train, I mean, there's a girl who powerless who's in her 50s right now and she's breaking world records. I've met other athletes who are in their 50s, 60s, 40s, 30s. I mean, it's never too late. Yeah. And, you know, he, he also asked another good question, which is, says he's not a full time wheelchair user. He uses mm -hmm. leg braces and a cane and a walker. In a wheelchair for very long distances. And I think this is a misconception that you like have to be in a wheelchair to be a para-athlete. And that's not true, right? Right, that's not true. And we all go through like a classification process. So they will also figure out what kind of, you know, where he fits in the disability spectrum and put him in the right um, category. Yeah, yeah, I don't think, um, I don't think anybody is ever too old to really start something that they, they want to, they want to try. And okay, here's another question. And Daniel, you kind of already answered this one, but you know, maybe since you guys know so many athletes now, you might have different insights into this too. Somebody asked, what's a good age to get your child started in adaptive sports? <laughs> ne never too early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it seems like there's a lot of opportunities for, um, children at different ages and mobility levels too, at those ages. That's kind of what you guys are saying, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I, I started uh, when, when I was two. I mean, uh, some of that wasn't exactly sports. Uh, it was, you know, transferring in and out of a, a chair and things like that. Um, pushing uh, general coordination, uh, you know, th throwing a ball while you're balancing on another ball uh, and things like that. Uh, but yeah, n never too early. <laughs> Uh, okay, this is a good one. I feel like I, I would expect this one is my favorite. What is something that being an athlete has taught you about yourself? 
You might have to think about that a little bit. I have to think about that one. And then you want to start? Uh, ooh, um, that's a, a little little difficult. Yeah, um, I'd say that. Um, <laughs> Some some of it is it's taught me so much I don't know where to start. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it, it's great to, uh, um, just to j get to know. Uh, in a, in a way, just get to know what you're capable of, um, and just uh, you know, you I always uh, think of you know, th certain thing, uh, you, you may think of certain things as limits or something like that, but you never really know whether that's a true limit for you unless you try and break it. Uh, and so that's a, a thing that I love about, uh, about wheelchair racing is, you know, I always am able to, to push myself, you know, how, how fast can I go, you know, and things like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I agree with him totally. I think um, it definitely helped me to realize my strengths or just being able to do stuff that's different. There's a lot of voices, especially as a disabled person, people tell you your limits basically. And sports kind of opened up that door to show me that I have way more cap capabilities than what you would think a person with spina bifida in a wheelchair can do. Um, also teaches, taught me resilience and being tough through ups and downs. Cause when you're training, you have your bad days and you have your good days and competitions, some don't go well, some do go well. So it just, it teaches you a lot of just being um, tough and <laughs> going out there and just trying and trying new things ultimately. Yeah, this actually ties in really well with a question that came in um, before this started airing which is kind of specific, but you know, this woman asked, or I think she's a mother, I'm assuming she's a mother. She asked, what's, what's a good memory you have from being an, a child, like an athlete as a child in that social setting that that's stuck with you, that's like resonate with you. And I, I think what she's getting at is like, why is it important as a child to have like a, something like that, like sports? I feel like you guys kind of just answered that, but maybe we can expand on it. Um, I think also, as a child to help to show that there is other people just like you out there. Because a lot of times people we go to school with our family may not also have disability. So it kind of just shows you that there are other kids in your neighborhood or in your city or your state that also have a disability that can play sports and that you can connect with on a different level. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, just, uh, you know, it, it's also, I think it's a, a great, great resource for uh, young, young kids and, and no, no matter how old you are, uh, really, um, just to, you know, you can always learn from each other. You know, you've always, you know, you've all been through different things. Uh, and so, you know, you can really, uh, it's, a, it's a great resource. Yeah, I agree with, with both of you guys. Um, uh, someone, someone asked, this might be for anything, but, or any adaptive sport, let's find out, do, do you need to be doctor approved to participate in an adapter, adaptive sport? Maybe have that, like, what did you call it earlier, Ashley, the, oh, the classification? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I would say that question is a yes and no. For me, I know I just kind of consulted my doctor, like, you know, is this a good idea to start working out and training? But I would just say it's, <laughs> I don't know. That's some, because sometimes the doctors as well want to limit you as well and think like, oh no, you shouldn't lift weights or you shouldn't do this and that. And sometimes you have to just decide for yourself, you know, because I see the benefits on the other side, you know, I've been healthier, I've been able to um, see better life, um, quality of life, I should say, a better quality of life since I've been working out. So I would say <laughs> nice to consult, but make your, your own decision. Yeah, I, I think uh, kind of very similar, uh, you know, con consult with them uh, and see, you know, are there any true health hazards? Um, you know, I, I remember in hockey, some of my teammates wore, you know, wore an orange vest, which basically meant that, you know, they couldn't be hit. 
Uh, and so, because there were, there were medical reasons that would put them at, at risk of, uh, you know, severe injury. Um, so yeah, absolutely uh, consult them. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, there's, there's almost always uh, a way to make it work. Mm -hmm. um, I like this one because I'm also really curious about this. What's a typical training day for you guys like? Typical, um, it depends. <clears throat> like I can say like right now, since I have a competition com coming up, it's a lot more focused on technique versus my strength. Um, maybe like a month, three, four months out from a competition, we're basically focusing more on strength and just getting stronger. And then once you come closer to the competition, you start fine tuning things and keep getting your technique right. But um, yeah. <laughs> How many hours a day do you think you are training? Um, close to two hours a okay. day. Okay. Daniel, I know this might like a little different for you because you're literally going to the Olympics. So your schedule has to <laughs> be a little bit more structured, but what's a day like for you right now? Uh, so not, uh, not too different than it uh, would be in, uh, in general. Uh, and so I usually practice uh, one to two times a day, six days a week. Um, every session will be, you know, maybe around an hour. Uh, kind of depends on, uh, you know, what, the, what season we're in. Um, if it's the spring and the fall, that's kind of marathon season. Uh, and so we'll get, be getting out a lot of miles uh, out on the roads. Um, during the summer, it's a little bit more track season. Uh, and so we'll maybe do a little bit more, uh, you know, shorter stuff, but, uh, you know, higher speed out on the track um, really kind of depends on the season. Okay. Uh, Daniel, what, since I mentioned the Paralympics now, I feel like we're going to get a lot about it, but somebody asked, what's your what was your favorite memory of the last Paralympics you were a part of? Oh, um, <laughs> You know, I, I'd have to say uh, a, a few things. Um, and so uh, no, number one, uh, I, I sponsor a child through uh, Compassion International uh, and uh, they're actually from Brazil. Uh, so I was able to, to meet them. Uh, and that was just an, an absolutely in incredible experience. Um, but also I'd say, uh, you know, the direct games uh, thing would have to probably be uh, oh, opening ceremonies was a little bit of a shock. <laughs> I can imagine. That's also so cool that you got to meet this child you sponsor. What a unique opportunity just to even have that tie there. Um, uh, Ashley, I'll, I'll come back to you because I, I don't think anybody asked this. I can't remember if you mentioned it earlier, but I just thought of this too. You were a shot in shot put before you went to power powerlifting. Why did you leave shot put and go into pair powerlifting? Um, I think at the time I was right before Rio games and I did shot put javelin and discus and um, I didn't make the team. So at that time I felt like I, I didn't know how to get better, you know, based on my performance. And I just felt like I wanted to try something else. and. At one point I thought maybe I can do powerlifting and track and field. And I quickly realized that that doesn't work. So um, I kind of just transitioned into powerlifting. Okay, cool. That's good to know too. Um, I just got messaged these two questions and I think these are really good questions. Somebody asked, what goes through your head when you're in the sport quote moment unquote? Daniel, for you, that's probably like, I don't, how early does that moment of you start preparing for a race start? Um, I mean, in, in a way it starts uh, a, a long time uh, uh, ahead. Um, so I uh, say for, for marathons, um, I like to, uh, to get there a few days early if it's possible and uh, to view the course, uh, drive the course if possible. Um, and it's just to get a, uh, kind of eyes on the road conditions uh, and if there are any landmarks that I can say, oh, if I see, you know, this building, I'm at mile whatever. Um, 
and uh, you know, note any hazards, if there's a, a big pothole somewhere in the road, something like that. Uh, and so it, it, it can start a, a few days earlier, um, but uh, in the middle of the race, usually uh, in, in the way it's literally nothing. <laughs> I'm I'm just you know relying on training and just saying you know just stay you know stay in the moment just what's going on right now and how do I need to respond? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I can agree with that. Um, usually, I tell people I just kind of go into autopilot mode because you know you've just been training this for this moment and you just kind of go into autopilot. Um, my mind kind of goes blank there sometimes even after my coach is like what did you just do and I'm just like I, I can't really tell you or explain unless I watch the the replay um it's just you just go out there and do it basically <laughs> uh Ashley somebody asked what are the competitions that you're doing right now like where are they and I think this means like well, maybe what other what other sports are there maybe if it I don't <laughs> um, so basically, um, when usually when we do powerlifting competitions, it's just usually us powerlifters. There was one times where we had our world championships combined with um, para swimming, but um, right now, as of this weekend, I have a competition and I'm going to Virginia, which is a qualifier for our world championships, which will be in November of this year. So right now, that's what the focus is, and we usually have maybe three competitions a year. Okay. Uh, Daniel, what are you doing, right? I know you kind of touched on like what you do to mentally prepare, but what are you doing right now to prepare for Tokyo? Uh, so we are in a, a, a pretty heavy training block right now. Um, and so we're actually getting in uh, th those two sessions a day that I was talking about. Um, and uh um, we're doing uh, a little bit of weight training, a little bit of uh, rollers. Uh, so didn't, didn't really mention this before, um, but um, you know, during the winter, uh, we're inside on rollers, which is basically our version of a treadmill. Uh, and so we're uh, doing a little bit of uh, work on that. Uh, that's a great way to work on technique. Um, and uh, also just working on uh, getting equipment ready, uh, making sure that's all tuned up. Okay. Um, actually, somebody's asking a specific question about weightlifting. Um, it says, you've done wheelchair racing, but had problems falling back and a hard time catching myself. Oh, wait, sorry, this might be for Daniel. It started off with saying a friend of mine has done lifting and I think he really likes it. I've done wheelchair racing, but I've had problems falling back and I have a hard time catching myself. Did this happen to you? Who do you guys think that question's for? Maybe both of you. <laughs> I was about to say, uh, you. you yeah, could be. You want to touch on that first? No, you go ahead. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I mean that that certainly uh, can can be an issue. Um, and so trying to keep your weight forward uh, as much as possible, not sitting up, because uh, anytime you're up, you're uh, more at risk to to. Uh, we, I think I've I've called it turtling before. <laughs> uh, so because you, you're kind of on your back like a turtle, kind of. Uh, and so, um, just staying forward as much as possible and down, um, and it, it's a, it's a bit of a process. Uh, you kind of just have to, to work with the, the chair and just figure out what, uh, seating position works for you. Yeah. It probably feels a little unnatural when people first start to get to that, I suppose, huh? A little, little bit. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's really funny. Um, okay. Uh, I feel like we've kind of we've kind of already answered this, but maybe we'll do this again. What's your, or maybe we didn't. I don't know. We talked about this earlier. What's your favorite, like your most favorite sports memory that sticks out on your in your head, like a highlight reel? I think my favorite memory was going to like my first world championship, and just being in another country seeing all the other countries and you're there to represent your country, just that feeling of honor and pride, I guess, and just also performing well. And then, you know, feeling that, that, that this is a good feeling. <clears throat> yeah. 
Um, so I, I certainly uh, you know, re remember being uh, at, at my, some of my first uh, international competitions. Um, but uh, favorite is really hard. <laughs> um, I, some of the things that I, I really enjoy about the sport um, is also you know, giving back to it. Uh, and you know, bringing up the younger generation and just teaching them about the sport, uh, and so that that's uh, a, a really Im important thing to me. Yeah, um, Daniel, is there anything you're like most looking forward to for this year's Olympics? Who? Um, well, I think as as Ashley mentioned, uh, you know, it's it it's an honor to just be able to go and compete. Um, but uh, you know, to, to be able to bring home a medal uh, would be incredible. For sure. How many different events are you competing in? Just one or is there multiple? Uh, and so I am doing, uh, I think six. Uh, so the 100 through the marathon. Okay, wow. Um, this is really exciting. This is exciting for both, both of you guys have big stuff, obviously very big things coming up. Um, we're getting towards like the end of time. So I want to give you guys both an opportunity to kind of just uh, kind of give like your elevator pitch about like one thing you like really want people to know about adaptive sports, like the journey that you've been on and you know why it might be important or what you just wish other people would know about like what sports have meant to you and what they are to you. Um, I would say it's just a great way to get out there. It helps um advocate for us as disabled people to show that we can do things it um it helps every time that you go out that people say oh you know they're competitive they're they're working hard they're training it's not just the stereotypical thinking that we don't want to do things or we don't have uh the ability to do things and um i think sports is very important as far as growing up to, um, developing skills um social skills helping to talk to others um and just learning about yourself and learning about your strengths and what you can really do yeah i'm i certainly uh you know agree with everything there um i'd say that uh you know regardless of whether you take it to you know an, an elite level or not uh, I'd say it's it's a great way to you know lead a healthy lifestyle uh, or a, a part of it uh, is just just staying active. Uh, it doesn't matter really what sport uh, or uh, as I said, you know how far you go in it, uh, but just you know staying active. Definitely, yeah. And I I mean I, some we I probably could look some of this up and share it, but there's a lot of research that just shows how great sports are like socially, physically, well-being wise. I mean, I, that's kind of like a no brainer, but um, you guys have obviously like really adapted that into part of like your identities and it means so much to you. So I think it's really um, great that you're able to show that in like a representation form for our, uh, the disability community too. Um, okay, why don't, why don't we talk about or just let people know how they can like follow your sports journey for the rest of the year. Um, I, I will be sure to link uh, any like Facebook pages, social media accounts, websites that Ashley and Daniel give us. But if either of you just want to give a pitch and let people know how they can find you, that would be great. Um, for me, the easiest way to find me is on Instagram. You can just look up Ashley Dice. Um, also, there's a website, logan.edu slash USAPP, and that's like our host um, college that takes care of us as a team. So you're able to follow our journey on there, see um, all the other athletes' profiles, my profile, and get up to dates of what we're doing and the different competitions that are coming up. Yeah, for, for me, uh, I'm on both Facebook uh, and Instagram. Uh, and just just look for my name, Daniel Romanchuk. Um, I, and I believe I'm I'm verified on both of those. So, yeah, um, you guys, I don't I don't have the answer to this question. I, I don't want to be wrong. So somebody just asked last minute: Are the Paralympics televised like the actual Olympics? Yep. All right. Uh, so I believe uh, NBC 
Uh, we'll be uh, doing so, uh, stuff. I'm not sure how much or uh, when it is, but um, I think uh, it, it's it's been been growing uh, a, a lot recently. I think you know, uh, 16, 1600 hours. I think it's this uh, this time. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay, well, so now we know too that you guys can follow Danley and D Daniel and Ashley online um be their social channels but you can also see daniel on tv this summer as he's competing in the paralympics so um make my face run again thank you guys both again so much for coming to do this with us and educating the community and um we look forward to seeing what happens this year so thanks everyone